Good morning, everyone. And uh, this talk is about the um, continuous uh, carbon fiber 3D printing, continuous composite 3D printing. Uh, that's one of the most recent trends in the 3D printing technologies. And um, uh, I will try to elaborate on its benefits and its applications and how it can be applied and what are the typical use cases and what are the main outcomes of these uh, technologies. So, uh, what is continuous uh, fiber printing and why continuous fiber printing? First of all, that's the technology that allows to manufacture very lightweight and very strong and stiff parts made with composite materials. So this uh, um, actually, um, uh, um, these types of materials that uh, are uh, possible to make with continuous fiber printing technologies are uh, d dozens of times stronger than plastic and much, much lighter than any metal. So the specific properties of these materials are much higher than uh, of uh, any metal or, or any plastic materials. So the, um, uh, there is a bunch of applications where such uh, unique properties can be used. That's mostly the um, uh, replacing of metals, replacing of the parts that require that bear significant loads in, in, in applications like uh, tools, jigs and fixtures, uh, spare parts and functional prototyping. Uh, so there are different uh, continuous fiber printing technologies available already um, on the market, uh, although the technology is quite new, but there are different approaches, uh, uh, how it works and how it can be done. And they can be roughly divided into two main approaches. Both are extrusion based. Uh, the first one uh, uh, we call a pre-preg based approach. So in this case, the preliminary impregnated uh, continuous fiber toe or tape uh, that is pre-impregnated with a polymer material is uh, deposited, placed through the uh, nozzle or, or um, with any other way it's uh, uh, deposited on the uh, uh, print area, in the print area to shape the part and consolidated either with a roller, uh, with a pressure roller or, or just under gravity. So that's the pre-preg based uh, uh, approach when actually the, the material itself, the composite material is created before 3D printing by impregnating either the, f the filament or the tape with a polymer matrix material. The second approach is uh, we call a co-extrusion it's when uh, the reinforcing fiber and the polymer matrix are mixed in situ during the printing process and uh, extruded together simultaneously through the same nozzle during the printing. So the material, the composite material itself is created in the, um, in the printing process. Both approaches have pros and cons. So with a pre-preg based approach, you normally can get very good material quality, very good material properties, uh, because the material itself is preliminary created uh, and in a separate process where the manufacturer can um, control the quality and can make a high quality material. But uh, with a pre-preg approach, there are many limitations in the process, in the printing process itself, in terms of shapes that can be made with this approach and the fiber volume fraction is always constant and the, and the matrix material and the fiber material are, are always predefined at the pre-impregnation process. So with the pre-preg approach, you get high material quality, but, but um, uh, this approach will be not as flexible as the co-extrusion approach, where normally the problem is that it's very high to achieve good impregnation and adhesion between the fiber and the, um, the polymer matrix when printing, when mixing in situ, uh, 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 usually, normally the material quality can be uh, not as good as for the pre-preg, but there is a lot of flexibility, like uh, you know, more complex shapes are, are possible uh, because of the flexible fiber volume 
ratio because of the uh, flexibility in um, in um, uh, uh, applying the polymer and um, uh, the end user has the access to can use different types of matrix materials uh, uh, different types of polymers uh, as a matrix material uh, when printing so uh, actually uh, the approach that we use at another print is the combination of both so we call it a composite fiber co-extrusion so it's also a co-extrusion process where we have two inputs in the extrusion device one input is for fiber is for reinforcing continuous fiber material and second input is for plastic matrix material but uh, to get the good material quality we preliminary impregnate the dry fiber toe with a special resin uh, to get good adhesion between all the components and um, low porosity good material quality so the final part the final material that we have as a result of the printing process we call it a b matrix material because it has uh, two matrices inside and one fiber component so one matrix is inside the fiber toe uh, that ensures good ad adhesion to fiber and low porosity and the second matrix which is a thermoplastic matrix a plastic material is between the, um, the fiber toes and the uh, so there is no actual interface between the thermoplastic material and the, the and the dry fiber material which is in most of the cases is a, a big issue uh, so with uh, this approach we can get a uh, very high quality material so this is the reinforcing fiber that we use for the co-extrusion process um, uh, it's the cross-section area you see that it's a round shape pre-preg material with a very high fiber volume fraction and very good impregnation quality, good distribution of microfilaments uh, of the fiber inside the, uh, the, uh, this pre-preg material and very low porosity and very good adhesion. So this approach gives us both the, um, uh, the benefits of the pre-preg and the co-extrusion approach. So with a preliminary impregnate in the fiber, we get very good material quality and, with a and then we process it in the co-extrusion to get all the flexibility uh, of the co-extrusion type processes. So uh, this gives us these um, several benefits, as I mentioned. First, uh, with the, um, uh, there is a, a big flexibility in fiber placement capabilities. So how can you, what type of complex shapes, what type of curvilinear complex fibers are, trajectories you can design or you can print to optimize locally the the structure and to optimize the mechanical the material properties locally in in every point by the um, uh, so-called fiber steering so um, uh, by making curvilinear trajectories uh, so the uh, that gives a, a, a huge optimization capabilities to the uh, to the technology so that the, the material strength is um, uh, uh, focused in the, in every material point the material properties are focused in the desired direction uh, second uh, with the co-extrusion we can use different types of of polymers as a matrix materials uh, that can be uh, anything that uh, is available on the market in a filament form for FFF extrusion plastic printing process and any of these materials can be used in the co-extrusion process to be reinforced with a, a continuous uh, composite fibers to get very high strength and stiffness but the polymers themselves can um, uh, give different other properties such as uh, like surface properties such as chemical resistance or environmental resistance or uh, flame retardancy or uh, any other uh, properties surface properties that are governed by the polymer material and um, the co extrusion approach gives a lot of flexibility in that by choosing and printing and reinforcing different types of uh, of plastic materials 
Uh, third one is the flexibility in fiber volume ratio. This is a very important uh, thing for us because this, uh, this allows uh, us to manufacture composite fiber lattices. So this is the one, uh, this is the unique feature that um, our technology can do. Um, and uh, um, the reason for that is uh, in the lattices, in the fiber lattices, there are uh, ribs, yeah, unidirectional ribs, where the fiber goes um, in the direction of the rib, of course. And uh, to form a lattice, the ribs have to intersect, uh, to make intersections where the fibers uh, have to go through. That you cannot cut and continue, then uh, the, uh, the, the structure will not work as a whole. And that means that in this intersection, you have the fiber volume fraction actually doubled, but uh, you need to have the stable, the constant material volume. So with, with a pre-preg uh, approach, this is not possible. You will have this type of uh, increase uh, local uh, thickness variations in the junctions of the lattice and uh, the material quality will be uh, very poor in these um, intersections and in many cases that will uh, be not even possible to manufacture such lattices. But with a co-extrusion approach uh, we can apply less plastic material in these junction points and uh, uh, to keep the material volume constant and um, uh, keep the fibers always straight and linear uh, even in these specific zones. Uh, why the uh, lattices are so important. Uh, uh, so actually, um, the latest structures are the most uh, optimal types of structures for composite materials because uh, uh, lattices consist of unidirectional ribs and in every rib, the material only works in 1D. So it only works along the rib. So uh, the anisotropic material properties uh, are desired, actually desired for the lattices because the transverse properties are not needed. So if you make a lattice with a, an isotopic material which has the similar properties in all directions, the transverse properties will be excessive. That means that such structure made of metal will be not optimal. So co composites and lattices is a very good fit. Uh, Uh, and you can see lots of uh, examples of lattices even in uh, nature uh, and in engineering. So that's uh, uh, the proof that these structures are uh, evolutionary uh, in terms of evolution and in terms of engineering are very optimal. Uh, and uh, we have, uh, and this is an, an important example how you can benefit from 3D printing with composite fiber lattices. So imagine that when printing with just plastic material with an FFF uh, technology, whenever uh, uh, non-solid infill you will have, your material properties will be always lower than for the solid infill. But uh, with a composite infill, already with a 30%, just 30% of, um, of density, your, uh, the material properties of such um, uh, part will be uh, three, three, four times higher than for just the plastic material. Uh, and of course, the, 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 the weight will be much lower because the, um, um, of the density. Uh, in uh, uh, our solutions, uh, um, uh, you can have different types of lattices uh, uh, designed and actually manufactured uh, where you can vary the density of the lattice, the directions uh, of the lattice and, um, and so on. Uh, so I will finish with a few use cases just to show what type of parts can be printed and where they can be used. So this is uh, an aerospace example, an aerospace application. This is interior aerospace part, interior engineering bracket. 
and uh, it's the original part was made uh, by milling from aluminum and the 3D printed composite fiber part uh, with the same, of course, with the same um, uh, loading uh, conditions uh, 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 was 50% lighter than the aluminum one. So two times the weight savings compared to aluminum is possible. Uh, the second use case is from the tooling sector. So this is actually the die for cold metal stamping, cold metal forming. And um, uh, to prototype the molds, in many cases, the, uh, uh, sorry, uh, they can be printed with plastic, uh, but that's, uh, but the strength of plastic is always not enough to hold these very high pressures. Uh, and, but already with the 30% of fiber infill, the part is much stronger than a solid um, plastic material and uh, much faster to print, uh, much less expensive, much less material is used. Uh, with continuous fibers, uh, you can also do uh, different things such as self-sensing structures uh, where uh, with the conductivity of carbon fiber, the uh, 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 deformations in the structure can be measured. And the last, uh, last use case is showing uh, uh, what uh, can be done by using different polymers different materials as a matrix material. So the use case is from the, uh, is a fixture for automotive production line and it has to operate in the hydrogen peroxide atmosphere and not every plastic uh, is capable to work in, 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 in such a environment. For example, nylon material is not resistant uh, to hydrogen peroxide, it will simply dissolve. And with co-extrusion, the right material can be picked and reinforced with um, uh, fibers to make the part durable and chemical resistant. So, uh, yeah, we have uh, different uh, solutions, uh, uh, including both the hardware, the materials, and the software components for uh, 3D printing with continuous uh, fibers, the solutions that we have go from the desktop machines to the industrial machines that can operate uh, in a 24-7 mode uh, and for, for end-use parts production and the smaller desktop machines for functional prototyping, R&D and um, uh, uh, in-house production of uh, complex shape uh, load bearing parts. Uh, and we have uh, special reinforcing materials, uh, the reinforcing fibers that I've explained in the beginning, preliminary impregnated fibers. Uh, we have two types of fibers, carbon and basalt as an alternative. And the special software, uh, it's called Aura, that can generate these complex lattice structures and um, uh, prepare the, um, the model for, for printing. So thank you for your attention.